calling me? Subscribers? Y'all want more Samsung videos? Got it. The S23 Ultra is here, it's in my hand, and I am so stoked because you may or may not know, I am more so an Apple fan girly. I have the MacBook, AirPods Pro, the Apple Watch, iPhone, all of that stuff. So I'm more so immersed into the Apple ecosystem, but it has come to the time where I will be switching over to Samsung, specifically the S23 Ultra. I am so excited because this is my sister's new phone and she's letting me use it for the week. And so huge shout out to her and big thank you. So I will be having this as my main phone for the next week or so and I'm gonna be pumping out content, testing it out. So let me know in the comments below any questions you have about this phone. So let's go into unboxing the phone and the other accessories she got for it as well. This is everything we have for the unboxing and we have of course the phone, we have some cases, we also have a battery pack and also a tripod for the phone as well. But first, let's unbox the S23 Ultra. Oh my gosh! Wow, that is massive. I thought there was gonna be some extra space, but when you open it right away, it's straight up just the phone. Y'all, this is thick. Oh my gosh. Holy crap. So there's some paper here to protect the screen. Wow. It's straight up just the phone. Beautiful. How satisfying, guys. How satisfying. Wow, I am stunned. Here we have the um, little pins for the SIM tray. We have a piece of paper and a USB-C wire. Sheesh! Y'all, this screen is beautiful. We have the 6.8 inch AMOLED 2X display. Oh my gosh, guys, this is gorgeous. Look at the camera bumps. These are huge. I also heard that the Samsung S23 Ultra can also film in 8K. That is wild. I am so excited to do a camera test on these, but y'all, these camera bumps are massive. Let me put it against the light so you guys can see. But honestly, it's actually really comfortable to hold. I'm gonna see how it is after, you know, some time, but I am able to hold it comfortably, no issues. So, besides the camera bump, we have, of course, the S Pen, which is so cool. I honestly love the fact that it's hidden at the very bottom, and all you need to do is push to pull it out. Guys, I am so excited to use this. Also, the inner casings of the S Pen is also made out of 100% fishnet as well. So, you know, another check for the environment. I have here the iPhone 12 Pro with the 6.1 inch display and the S23 Ultra with the 6.8 inch display. Y'all, look at that difference. Also, I love how there's barely any bezels. So honestly, the screen space seems a lot bigger than it is. It is done. I am finally switched over to the S23 Ultra. All right, let's do it. All right, while well, that is getting ready, Let's open some stuff. So my sister got a charging adapter from Samsung since you can only use Samsung products for charging. That's what I saw on the website. Let me know if you guys use Samsung only or other products, but yeah. So here is the power adapter. This is, what is it? 25 watt power adapter, USB-C right there kind of tough getting out. My nails are kind of like jacked up. I have like two missing nails. Yo, this is secure. All right, there we go. We have the Samsung 25 watt power adapter right there. 
So I'll go over why my sister decided to go with the S23 Ultra because she was deciding between the 14 Pro and this one as well. But what made her go with the S23 Ultra is from her research and watching review videos, she says that the camera in the S23 Ultra is better than the 14 Pro Max and it has better battery life. I haven't looked at the stats yet, but I'll put it up on the screen if you guys are interested and if you're also deciding between the two. She's using this mainly for content purposes. She is switching from the 12 Pro to this one, but she'll be mainly using this as almost like a second computer and she'll keep the 12 Pro for messages and calls. But that's, those are the two main reasons why she went with the S23 Ultra was one, the battery and the camera, which we will be testing out this week. So here we have a charging battery adapter where she can just take it with her. So here we go. This is so cool, oh my gosh. So the wire is on the inside, so that way you don't find that you need to lose it. Oh my gosh, that is such a cool way to design it. And on the other side is also, I believe, another wire to charge as well. Yep, we have, this is so cool, oh my gosh. So we have the USB Type-C here and USB Type-C Micro on the other side. I thought, I think this is so cool how they designed it. Oh my gosh. So now let's look at the case. So she bought a clear case with a little ring holder at the back. Ooh, it's a nice type of plastic. It's very flexible. Go. So this is what it looks like with a clear case and the ring at the back as well. Go. Pretty steady, nothing crazy. This is the second case she got. I don't really know what this one is and I think it comes with like a screen protector as well. Let's see, yeah, a black. Oh, okay, so it's a black plastic case but with like almost like a frosty black white here, a little bit clear. All right, so let's see what it looks like. Wow, also very easy to put on. This plastic is a lot more smoother than this plastic, I have to say. Let's see, let's test it out. Yeah, so this one almost feels like it has more grip. So if you're, you know, have clammy or sweaty hands, it doesn't slide as nicely. Whereas this one, if your hands are sweaty, it still is very smooth. So as you can see, that is much more smoother than this, like, yeah. So that's the difference. I really like how sleek it looks with the black on black. And also it protects the camera bumps, which is so important because these are, huge camera bumps and so this one is really sleek it's really nice and also easy to put on and take off as well and then last we have the tripod so she will be using this phone a lot to be vlogging so that's why she bought the tripod and this is what it looks like it is called lamb cow i believe so i also have this one as well Ooh, this one looks good guys look at that then we have this. And we have a tripod for our phone. This is how it looks like. Okay. For this week, I tossed my iPhone 12 Pro for the S23 Ultra for an entire week. I use this as a daily driver. I tossed in my SIM card. I put in all my contacts, all my info, and all my socials, and use this as my daily phone every single day. Now, as I was using this, of course, I did some research into the phone. And although the design isn't all too different, what is different is the materials going into making the S23 Ultra. For the first time for the Galaxy phone, Samsung thought of the environment when building building this phone. A lot of recycled materials went into the S23 Ultra. For example, they used recycled fish nets for the inner casing of the S Pen. They also used some recycled plastic. The packaging was 100% recycled paper. And for the Gorilla Glass screen, 20% of it was made out of recycled glass. 
And a lack of design difference aside, this S23 Ultra is honestly a beast of a phone, starting with the camera. So the major difference this year with the camera is that we went from 100 megapixels in the S22 Ultra all the way up to 200 megapixel camera, and that is nearly double from last year. You guys can see a clear difference in the 12 megapixel to 50 to 200. So from 12 to 50, you can see a saturation difference. It's just more vibrant in the 50 and when you look at the 200 megapixels there's a lot more detail as you zoom in closer in the photos so with the Samsung phone and honestly a lot of phones like iPhones all the magic in the camera isn't all in the lens a lot of it is in the software and the post processing system so when I'm taking photos on the s23 ultra it'll have like an unsaturated kind of blurry photo it takes a couple seconds to process and then the final image comes through with the 200 megapixel details and so so a lot of that is due to the software and the chip, which we are going to talk about in a second. But regardless, you have to admit how impressive these photos turned out. They're so vibrant, crisp, and clear. Sometimes it's a hit or miss, but a lot of times it's a hit. So when it comes to photos, you're not going to have any issues at all thanks to the optical image stabilization in this photo. Guys, when I was testing out a hundred times zoom in the cold, my hand was shaking so much because I was already spending like 20 minutes taking thumbnails nails and when I was doing the 100 times zoom I was so shocked at how well the photos came out like you can see Mary so clearly and in the footage you guys can see how how much my hands were shaking so thanks to the optical image stabilization you're gonna get really good photos even if you're moving a little bit as I was playing with the 100 times zoom as well I was also playing around with nightography and big feature that Samsung has so that way you can take photos at night where it doesn't seem like it's way too dark when you don't have a lot of light source but also you're gonna be able to take really great videos at night as well so looking at the photos as you guys can see everything is so clear if you zoom in you're gonna still get a lot of detail and color and with the 100 times zoom you guys know I had to hop onto the moon trend I tried so hard to take a photo of the moon the moon was so above me and it was such an awkward angle but I tried my best I personally think they turned out pretty good and again it was late at night when I was freezing in the cold in Canada and honestly they turned out really good I, again I am very impressed with how the moon photos came out y'all we can never get that with iPhone so Samsung definitely wins with that when it comes to moon photos moving over to videos again it's gonna be all pretty similar when it comes to color vibrancy and detail you're gonna get a lot of color in a lot of the footage what I'm really impressed with is, again, the stabilization in this phone. Guys, in this footage of me chasing my friend's dog, I was running so much and frantically, but honestly, the footage came out really smooth as well. And this was only in 30 frames per second. 60 frames per second, it'd probably be even smoother. And so I am very impressed with how steady the camera is when you're moving around and trying to catch up with a subject. If y'all have kids, you're gonna love it because you're gonna keep up with your kids and be able to get good footage with the stabilization in this phone. Also, it's kind of wild that it can film up to 8K. I don't know who's filming in 8K, guys. I don't know if you're ever going to use it, but I did play with it and, you know, test it with 4K. Honestly, I don't know if I would ever really use 8K just because it takes up so much space. Even with one terabyte storage, 8K it can eat up your phone if you feel like you're gonna, you know, film in 8K all the time. But it is a nice feature to have. Not only is the camera amazing, the battery in this phone is honestly a beast. It still has the 5,000 million per hour battery, but thanks to the Snapdragon 8 Generation 2 chip that is built for the Galaxy phone, which I'm gonna touch on later on. But thanks to the chip, the battery is much more efficient this year round than last year. So I tested it to the max, guys. On the other day, I was filming a day in the life and I had it at 120 hertz refresh rate. I had the brightness either at halfway or two thirds. 
I had five hours of screen time and I was filming throughout the day in 4K playing games throughout the day, I was able to get 12 to 13 hours of battery life. Y'all, I would never get that on my iPhone 12 Pro, even brand new. I mean, you know, it is a smaller phone, so the battery is gonna be smaller, but nonetheless, even with 60 hertz refresh rate, I get up to around 11 hours of battery on a new iPhone 12 Pro type of phone. So to get that with 120 hertz refresh rate, guys, that's double and it drains the battery like crazy is really impressive. On my moderate more usage, I can get up to 36 hours of battery, again on 120 hertz refresh rate, and so I'm really impressed with how well it performs. And guys, no matter what the percentage is, it is performing at peak level. Even at 1%, when I was playing Genshin Impact, a very high graphics game, it was performing all the way to the very end. It didn't slow down, it didn't lag because it was at 1%. It was honestly performing as if it was at 80%. And so let's talk about the chip. So yes, Samsung did make the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 specifically for the Galaxy phone. And because of this, I had to test it out. I looked into Geekbench 6 and did a test and again, compared it to other phones with the same chip, but that's not geared for the Galaxy phone. Guys, the results are kind of insane. All right, so according to Geekbench 6 test, which I did on my phone, on a single core score, you get 2009, and the multi core score is 5,267. That is already insane how well it performs. Now, with the Xiaomi 13 benchmarks, again with the Geekbench 6 testing, and the same chip as well, Snapdragon 8 Generation 2. The single core score is 1,737 and the multi-core score is 5,138. And if you're looking at the OnePlus 11 with also the same Snapdragon 8 Generation 2 chip, you get a score of 1,734 for a single core. And for multi-core, you get 4,930 score. This is wild how well this chip performs. And it's really nice that Samsung took that extra step to make it geared towards Galaxy phones as well to get the best optimal experience. Speaking of Samsung, they made the chip geared towards a seamless, cohesive gaming experience. So with a 6.8 inch display, you got to play games. Like I feel like this is just made for gaming with how massive it is. And when I was playing Genshin Impact, which is a very high graphics game and is not a chill game at all, I was astonished by how well it performed, whether it was at 90% battery or 30% battery. I also played it at the best settings, highest graphics, highest refresh rate. And I am again, thoroughly impressed with how well this chip handles this game. This game has a lot of detail in the background. It has a lot of actions, a lot of stories. It's so vibrant, but I am just, you know, stunned by how fluid everything moves in the game. And honestly, it just makes the gaming experience a lot more fun. I also wanted to test it for heating. So usually I play around 30 to 40 minutes. And even at that, with the highest settings, highest graphics, highest refresh, highest refresh rate, y'all, it did not heat up, like it did not overheat, it did not make any sounds, it didn't, you know, make my fingers hot. That is how well the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip performs when it comes to gaming and also, it's also a nice touch that Samsung geared it towards Galaxy phones as well. As you guys saw from the Geekbench 6, you know, scores, it ranked the top compared to the other two. With that being said, when you're navigating through apps, even with Genshin Impact in the background, it doesn't slow down. Like you're not experiencing any lag. When you're scrolling, it's so smooth. When you are just editing in CapCut or whatever you use to edit, it keeps up with you. Guys, the way I'm sounding, it feels like I'm already gonna swap over from my iPhone 12 Pro. But again, it's not a fair comparison since it is an older phone and it's not as big as the um, Ultra. However, y'all, can you tell I'm like slowly falling in love with the Samsung phone? Now, I do have to mention the speakers because the speakers in this is amazing. It has two speakers, one at the bottom and one at the top behind the glass. Guys, it is powered by Dolby Atmos, which is wild because when it gets loud, it can definitely 
definitely fill up a room. Now, it's not gonna be your main priority speakers when you're throwing like a party or have people over, but if it's just you, yourself, and maybe a couple people, or you know, showering, it's definitely gonna do the job. I honestly have to say this is probably one of the best speakers I've heard on a phone in a while because it is so, you know, bold. You hear the vocals, but also you hear the background instruments, but one doesn't overpower the other. It fills the room. It's just very bold and loud, and it's honestly very immersive when you're listening to it. Again, definitely better than the iPhone 12 Pro. With the iPhone 12 Pro, the speakers are really great because I do have to say, iPhones do make really great speakers. But of course, because this phone is a bit older, um, it's not gonna be as great as this one. The vocals on this cut through a lot, but the background music's a little bit quieter compared to the vocals. But with this, you can hear both the vocals and background pretty equally. my one week review of the S23 Ultra and also my unboxing as well. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely slap that like button for me. I would totally appreciate it and subscribe for more tech and lifestyle content. I'm gonna try to make some more Samsung videos as well. And also, you know, random note, I've always thought about fully switching over to a Samsung phone, just not yet. But honestly, this S23 Ultra made me seriously think about it. I've been eyeing the flip phone for a while. That is honestly the cutest phone I've ever seen. And so I've been eyeing that. So this S23 Ultra truly made me seriously think about it. Whether I'm gonna make the jump anytime soon or not, I'm not sure yet. But for now, I'm very impressed with how this phone handles everything I threw at it. It definitely is gonna be a daily driver for anyone who needs it for intense purposes. It's gonna keep up with your, you know, emails, gaming, videography, photography, whatever you throw at it. This phone can handle it thanks to the new chip that is also geared towards Galaxy phones. But yeah, overall, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. And we just crossed like 5,000 subscribers. So I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who, you know, subscribes to my channel. I honestly appreciate y'all so much. Everyone who comments, likes, all that stuff. Y'all, I feel like a little momentum coming. I don't want to jinx it, but I'm just really appreciative of all the support and love. So I just want to say it right now. And honestly, I celebrated 5K with the S23 Ultra, which was kind of crazy. And what a moment. But anyways, that is it for me. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.